four years seems like a really long time and then you start a PhD and everything just sort of starts to fall away after a while and I don't know it's really starting to fly by now and I can't believe I only have that much time left. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking to you about what my plans are for the remaining 15 months of my thesis since this week on the 1st of June I passed the point that now means I have 15 months left of funding which means 15 months left to submit my thesis which is pretty crazy. Recently I had a chat with my supervisor who said that we need to start wrapping up the sort of research work in the next six months or so to leave about nine months left for the thesis writing and that's his sort of you know suggestion. Obviously everyone can do it a bit differently but he has had a lot of very successful PhD students so I do try and take my supervisor's advice as much as possible. So I just wanted to go through some of his advice in this video and I thought it might be helpful for anyone who either is thinking about doing a PhD and is wondering what will the whole thesis process look like, especially if you're doing a computer science PhD like me, but then also I think for anybody who is getting into this stage that I'm getting into and maybe doesn't have the supervisor that will have this chat with them. So I really hope that it will be helpful. If you're new here, my name is Kira. I'm a third year PhD student in machine learning or computer science based in Dublin, Ireland. And this channel is all about being productive while doing a PhD. Today I wanted to go through my plan for the next six or seven months of research as well as for my thesis, so my actual outline of my thesis. I am going to be including some clips from my Notion template. This the clips you see today are all new and I'll be doing a new video soon about the updated thesis part of the template since I'm actually getting into the sort of thesis stage. As I go through different parts of the PhD I do think the template sort of just naturally changes and it develops with what I'm doing and anyone who's currently bought the template will receive an update email who that will just sort of explain what is the updates and where to get them so you don't have to go and buy it or anything and then I'm going to be releasing a separate thesis template for anybody who's interested in just this and not necessarily the productivity stuff. That'll be in a new video coming sometime next week so if you want to see that make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when that video is up. So let's talk really quickly about what my sort of thesis is generally about. So what is my research about? That's sort of an important point for this video to understand. So I'm doing a PhD in machine learning which is a branch of computer science that focuses on training models basically to learn how to do things. And the specific work that I'm involved in is machine learning applications in sports science or exercise science particularly for marathon runners. And I analyze data from a popular running app called Strava. So I have a lot of training data from Strava and I analyze that essentially to gain insights about marathon training and performance. And I try and put those into some sort of model that can help predict performance or recommend training to improve performance. And that's sort of what my whole thesis is around. So it's largely about working with this really complex data and you know, developing a suite of skills or a suite of techniques to go along with this type of data that could then be used, I suppose, in other similar areas. And it's quite a difficult data set to work with because it's a lot of time series and, you know, each individual running session will have 100 meter intervals tracked for their distance, their time, their pace, their elevation, their heart rate. And that's just for one session and each runner will have like hundreds of sessions. So it's how do we take all of this and put it into something that can then be used for modeling, which then can be used for prediction and everything like that. In terms of the work that's been done so far, so in my first year, we sort of, I got thrown straight in the deep end by my supervisor, which was really helpful. We worked on a project around predicting race times based on the runner's training. And we had about 20,000 runners, I think. So I looked at their 16 weeks of training data and I tried to extract some training related features and build some models. And we submitted that work to a conference and that was accepted. And there was also a little bit of work on training recommendations in that. So if you're trying to improve your time, what does the next week of training look like? And if you're trying to you know, go take things a bit easier, what would that look like? And we then extended that work a little bit for a conference called Rexis and submitted a work there. So in first year, pretty much in my sort of first six months, because we already had this data set, and this was a fairly clean data set that I was working with, 
Um, I ended up having two first author conference publications in first year and then pandemic hit, things started to take a bit of a turn and I started working on like sort of different areas. So we then started working on training disruptions. So looking at breaks in training and how that might affect marathon performance. And that's something that I've been working on for a really long time. We've had a lot of sort of mini projects um, so more so in second year and third year, this is the part that I was working on. We've had some other sort of related works there in the last year or so coming out. We've just submitted another paper for a journal related to that. Within that time frame that I was looking at that, we started working with a much larger data set, which was like all the raw data. So I needed to learn basically new skills to work with that because it went from um, like 20,000 runners to like a couple million runners and like tens of millions of sessions. So I needed to learn how to work with that bigger data set, how to like extract and clean and all of that. So that was a big part of the work. And then, then returning and sort of rerunning some of the work we had done with this larger data set. And now I'm coming to the point where I need to return to the sort of data and the features and really come up with a good way to represent the data so that not only can we use it for predicting, but also for when we're making those recommendations that the people really know what they're meant to do. So that's sort of the work that has been done and how that relates to the overall thesis and what we want to achieve with it. We were laying out the sort of thesis structure. My supervisor like wrote everything up on his wall in his office and um, helped to sort of work out what will the sort of chapters look like. And I sort of had a sense of this in my head a similar sense but we, because of the work that I do a lot of people's thesis might look quite different you might end up having you know introduction related work methods results conclusions sort of whereas because I have a lot of sort of mini projects and within that methods and results like separately this could sometimes be the case where you have um, an introduction related work and then you have individual chapters for each experiment I guess so it could be introduction related work, experiment one, experiment two, experiment three. And that's the way that my thesis is sort of going to look. We have the introduction chapter, then the literature review or related work chapter. Then we have a chapter on the data set. That is sort of custom to my thesis, I think, because some a lot of computer science sort of PhDs might be in a similar situation, but the data set in my PhD is very fundamental to the sort of contribution that it's making um, in terms of like working with this type of data. So it definitely needs its own chapter, especially to explain all of the, how I got it from the raw form into the sort of current form and all of the sort of cuts that we had to make based on the fact that it's a very messy data set. So it definitely needs its own chapter. And then the three sort of main areas that we were looking at, one was around sort of race time prediction, so performance prediction, one was around training disruptions, and one was around training recommendations. And in terms of the ordering of those, that might change, but because the performance prediction is really heavily related to the features, and those then sort of give way for the training recommendations, it makes sense to sort of have this first chapter, and this was my supervisor's input, that. Um, they that it makes sense to have a first chapter that's around feature engineering and understanding the training features which relate to performance and sort of weaving them together most likely um, and explaining how they go together and basically trying out lots of different models to find a good model for performance prediction. We've tried a number but I think we always get certain questions in our feedback around deep learning models and you know, this and that, and we need to basically have somewhere where we've said, here's all these models that we tried, this is the one that we're going with for these reasons. So that's probably going to be one chapter, and then the next will be one on training disruption. So a largely focused on data science rather than machine learning with a small piece of machine learning. And then lastly, it would be all around training recommendations and sort of a recommender system around marathon running. And it's something we need to figure out is how we're going to validate that because there's not really much hope that we do a live user study where we have people using the system and trying it out, but it's more likely that we'll end up generating some samples and basically getting people to validate whether those are sensible and whether they understand what they need to do.
And then lastly, we're gonna have sort of a discussion and conclusion chapter. So I've laid out all of those and sort of a timeline that I think makes sense, starting off with the data and then going through each of the experiments, I suppose, chapters, then going back to do the literature review and then the sort of discussion introduction and then a, a good amount of time to also just review everything. And I can't believe that is coming up soon, that this is gonna be the way it is. So I have that planned for sort of January to end of July, and that would still leave an extra month for wiggle room, I guess. So about six months of thesis writing is what I have planned. No, seven months of thesis writing is what I have planned. So we'll sort of just see how it goes. It's hard to know because we were sort of discussing like, should it be the case that I do all of this research work now and then go and write the thesis or is it the case that I let's say finish up this training disruptions work and then go and write that chapter since that's basically done and it's hard to know um I've started writing bits and I sort of think like writing up notes and bits is the best thing that I can do and then go back and just write it properly because we're still going to be making some changes to the data set over time and it's just if I write it all now it means I'm gonna have to at some point probably rerun some of the models and get different results and then have to go back and change things and change graphs and I think I'd rather just wait and do all of that at a later date. In terms of then the sort of what we need to do to get to that point where we can write all of that, I don't know what I'm saying we, I have to write it, <laughs> what I need to do to do to get to that point basically there are a number of projects that I have planned so this is sort of what I'm going to be working on in the summer and then also in the autumn term but I'm trying to get a lot of it done in the summer because I know this is the time that I'm more free because I don't have you know university classes I have less teaching hours with the drama school and I can just really try and get through as much of this as possible and just try and focus on that because in the autumn term it will be busier and I also am going away in the autumn whereas I'm not really going away in the summer so it just gives me a lot of time. The first thing is that we just submitted and got a paper accepted to a conference and I need to just finish up the camera ready copy so I have that as one of the things that I need to work on and then the next thing is that we're going to be working on a little piece around the training disruptions so just an extra little bit that might turn into its own paper um, and that I have planned for this month of June so I want to get all of that done this month which means I need to basically get the analysis done next week decide if we want to publish it and then spend a little bit of time working on the publication there the publication for the last version of this took months so I think I'm probably being a little bit unrealistic with that timeline but we will see the next thing then will be going back to the data set and doing that sort of feature engineering and really trying to make sure we get to a point where we're really happy with the representation that we have. We're very lucky insofar as compared to sort of sports science world where you're sort of limited by the features that were collected, we have a large amount that you could glean from the data. It's just about, you know, the creativity of coming up with the right features and that's basically a quite important part of my thesis is that and it's because we use as well like those types of methods where the and the feature engineering is a really important piece largely in machine learning altogether feature engineering is one of the most important things um so that is something that we're going to be working on in the summer for july and then that'll lead into a new performance prediction paper that i don't know if it's going to end up in a sort of an ai or a sports science context but going back to sort of the traditional sports science approach to marathon prediction and then trying out all these different sort of machine learning techniques and trying to have a really good comparison of those, um, essentially. Then I'm not sure if this is what will happen next. I'm not sure because I didn't really talk to my supervisor about this, but this is something that I'd like to do, which would be going into taking that sort of representation of training and then doing some like user evaluation of do people understand this because, you know, whatever the way current training plan recommendations look, how does this training plan look and can people follow this, um, basically. And then that'll lead into more work on sort of training recommendations because we need to go back and do a bigger recommenders system sort of project. And that's sort of two pieces one around sort of explainability and then one around just sort of bringing everything together. And so each of those I have for about a month. So the feature. The training disruption work is this month, feature engineering the following month, 
uh, marathon prediction the following month, user study the following month, uh, training recommendations and the full recommender system will just be for like October, November, December, probably about six weeks each. And that's the next sort of seven months basically planned out, which is pretty crazy. So that is my plan for the summer and for the next 12 months after that, which is the entire time I have left for my PhD. So it's going to be really interesting to see how well I stick to this. Um, I'm not going to like beat myself up if I don't, but I think it does really help to have a plan and to have a sense of where things are going. I think it can really add a sense of clarity to what you need to do and especially some of these projects I know are going to be a bit tedious but I know that if I have this layout and there's parts of these projects that I'm really excited to do that having the next set like section ahead of me is going to be what motivates me to get through what I'm doing first if that makes sense. If you want to see more of the process of thesis writing and everything like that I'm going to try and take you along as much as possible but I'd love to know like what you want to see in that way and what you find helpful. Um, so yeah thanks so much for watching, thanks to all of my wonderful members, I will have that thesis notion template video coming sometime next week so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss that and I will see you all in the next video.